So microphones come in all shapes and sizes and flavors, and one of the ways that we categorize them is by their polar pattern, otherwise known as their pickup pattern. So today we're going to talk about polar patterns and what you as a content creator need to know about them with the help of my Rode Video Mic Go 2 and my Rode Wireless Go. So if you've ever looked at the data sheet for a microphone, you might have seen a diagram like this. And this represents any given microphone's polar pattern. Commonly, you'll see things like cardioid, omnidirectional, supercardioid, figure eight. And these diagrams indicate the angle at which the microphone will pick up sound, with the top being zero degrees and the front of the microphone. And the Rode Video Mic Go 2 and the Rode Wireless Go have two very different polar patterns. And Rode doesn't send me microphones, so these are the ones I had on hand that I had previously bought myself. So we're gonna start with the Wireless Go because this is an omnidirectional pattern. What that means is that it will pick up sound from all directions uniformly. Okay, so now we're listening to the Rode Wireless Go plugged directly into my Sony ZV-E10. The Rode receiver is at its highest output, and the Sony ZV-E10 audio record level is down to 7. So having an omnidirectional pickup pattern means that this microphone has a lobe of sensitivity that is around it in like a large circle or orb. So because it's omnidirectional, it means that the mic doesn't have to be pointed directly at me to pick up my voice. When I walk around the mic to the side, and now I am directly 90 degrees, you can see that it still picks up my voice in the exact same way. And the same would hold true if I were to spin around and start talking from this side of the microphone. So this mic picks up pretty much everything around it. Now let's switch to the Rode Video Mic Go 2. Okay, so now we're recording with the Rode Video Mic Go 2 plugged directly into my Sony ZV-E10 via this long 3.5 millimeter extension cable, and I've increased my record level on my camera to nine. Now Rode touts this as a directional mic and lists it as a super cardioid pickup pattern, which means that it is most sensitive from the front, less sensitive from the sides, and has a small lobe of sensitivity to the rear. So turning this to the side, here I am speaking directly into the front, and you can hear that it's at a decent recording level. As soon as I start moving around to the side though, and I speak into the mic from the side, my voice should be significantly lower in volume because this is the area that this microphone rejects sound. And then as I move all the way around to the back, there is a small lobe of sensitivity on the back of most shotgun microphones like this. So it will pick up my voice just a little bit, but not nearly as much as from the side and most definitely not from the front. Okay, so now that we have a little understanding of what polar patterns are, let's go downstairs and see how they actually work in real life content creation scenarios. Okay, so say I had a cooking channel and I shoot my videos down here in my kitchen and I decided to go with the Rode Wireless Go. This is kind of what it would sound like in an untreated kitchen space with my island and walls and appliances and everything else. Now let's see what it sounds like if I had gone with the Rode Video Mic Go 2. So now we're using just the Rode Video Mic Go 2 into my Sony ZV-E10 at a record level of 15. And you can hear how different that actually would sound. And if you were doing a standing static shot like this, either option probably would be fine for your channel. But I'm sure you've guessed it, most cooking channels aren't just talking head videos. They need some kind of demonstration, so let's see how that would work out. Okay, so let's say we were showing off our cutting skills and we wanted to get some of that ambient audio of us actually chopping. With the Rode Wireless Go, it would sound something like this. And if I needed to talk over it, it would sound like this. This is me trying not to cut off my finger. All right, let's see how the Video Mic Go 2 would handle this situation. Okay, so now we are on the Video Mic Go 2 and it's the same setup, except that the mic is on top of the camera and pointed directly at the cutting board. So if we're going for cutting sounds, that would be fine. But as soon as I start talking to it, I am talking in the wrong direction. And so that is not picking up any of my voice. Okay, so that seems like all fine and well, right? If we were just looking to capture our voice. But part of understanding audio is not just understanding what you want to record, but also what you don't want to record. And in a situation like this on a kitchen channel, probably the worst offender that you want never to be in your videos is this guy. Yeah, 
the refrigerator. Now in the VO world, sometimes we suggest that you actually unplug your refrigerator when you're recording in case it's making a lot of low end rumble and that can be picked up by your microphone. But in this case in your kitchen, sometimes you forget to turn it back on or plug it back in and that's never a good idea. So let's see what happens when my fridge starts running. Wow, finally, man. Okay, so if we kind of reset back to our original shot, we can now hear that my refrigerator is running. And it's not the most quiet thing. So what happens when you have an omnidirectional mic, like the Wireless Go, that is picking up everything around you? Well, one thing you can do is use your body as sound absorption. Remember, the microphone is picking up everything in an omnidirectional pattern, but it's against your chest. So while that does mean that if you have a deeper voice, it is picking up a lot of your bass frequencies, it also means that it's preventing sound from entering from this side. So if we position ourselves in between the sound source that we're trying to eliminate, that should help mitigate some of that noise. So let's see if that works out. So even though our shot is now a little bit different, this is what the audio would sound like when we put ourselves in between the sound source we're trying to mitigate and our microphone. And now I know what you're asking. What happens though if you are using a directional shotgun mic like the Rode Video Mic Go 2? Well, let's find out. So switching back to this shot, you can hear that that noise from my refrigerator is super loud. Why? Because the directional mic is pointing directly at it. But because we know the polar pattern of this microphone, we know that it rejects a lot of more noise from the sides. So what do we do? We turn and reposition our mic so that the noise is coming from the side that offers the most rejection. Now, we won't be able to completely eliminate the noise, but that's not the point. The point is that by understanding your polar pattern and selecting equipment that works best for your specific channel, you can potentially get the best initial recording straight out of camera. And that makes the whole process significantly easier. Okay, let's go back upstairs. Uh, okay, so hopefully that helps you get a little bit more understanding of what polar patterns are and how to use them to your advantage for your channel. If you have any specific questions, drop them down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk again real soon.